Squarespace is making important updates to store details and product pages. So if you are a Squarespace designer or if you are a business owner who runs a commerce business in Squarespace, then please watch this video. This is needed because Squarespace automatically pushes updates to all sites to maintain current security and web standards. There might be other platforms which allows us to just manually update websites, but while this method of Squarespace can occasionally break custom code that you might have added to tweak the style of your site or the functionality, this method of Squarespace also eliminates the need for constant maintenance that is actually required for other platforms and ensures our website stays secure and up to web standards. This time, Squarespace is significantly investing in their commerce functionality, hence there are upcoming updates to the store page as well as the product detail pages. When we are customizing websites, we developers are highly dependent on the DOM structure because that's where we get the selectors. So what's happening is Squarespace is deprecating some or a lot of selectors in this pages only. So just a reminder that if you are a Squarespace designer or if you are a business owner with a Squarespace site and you don't have any commerce page or shop page, then you don't have to worry. And there's also a possibility that um, your Squarespace website isn't reliant on these deprecated selectors at all. Here are the important details. All new websites will have the new DOM structure, while if you have a website created prior to June 30th, then um, those websites will not be migrated until August 30th. Note that this only affects Squarespace websites that are on the 7.1 version. If your site is on the older versions of Squarespace like 7.0 or 5, then those are not included in the product v2 migration. If you wish to migrate to the new DOM structure before August 30th, then under settings, selling, and under product settings, if we click the get started option, then we have the option to begin this update. Note that there isn't any preview option. Once you begin the update, this is irreversible. So we have to proceed with a caution. I'm not clicking the begin update button unless we're sure that we don't have any custom codes that are affected by the migration. So here's a step-by-step -step of how I recommend approaching this. Note that if you're not comfortable with some of these technical details, then I highly recommend getting in touch with a Squarespace expert. I also provide personalized support in my program called Standout Squarespace, but I am gonna share as much as I can in this resource. The first step that I recommend is to duplicate the existing site. So we can test the changes before migrating the live site. So for example, I have this website template that is designed by the talented Angela of Saffron Avenue. And um, you'll note that I have some customizations, particularly on the product details page. So to duplicate the site, I just need to click this ellipsis icon and click duplicate website. When we access the duplicate copy, all of my customizations are preserved except for the shop page because this new trial site is now migrated to the new DOM structure. There are not much customizations that I implemented on the product list page. I only have this one, which is adjusting the spacing in this category navigation. But what I have most customizations in are in this product details page. In the copy of my template, notice that my customizations were not preserved. So in principle, we would need to look into our CSS code and then look into which selectors are affected by the migration. But I know that's quite a lot of work. And so I try to come up with a tool called products v2 migration tool, which you can access below this video. In this tool, you simply paste your current CSS code, and then I use the selector mappings from the documentation of Squarespace to identify if there's any part of your current CSS that is affected by this new DOM structure. Then when we click the Migrate CSS button, it will supply the CSS that we can add to our website such that we can fix any break in custom code that might have been caused by the DOM migration. 
A disclaimer though that because the selector mapping is provided by the Squarespace team in the documentation, it does not seem to be exhaustive. Um, this might not cover all use cases, so this can just serve as your starting point, but I'll show you exactly how this works. So we just need to copy all the CSS in our custom CSS panel. So most of the time, this is where we place our customizations. Then in our tool, we just need to clear the example CSS and then paste our own CSS. And then we can click this migrate CSS button. Um, and then now this is what we can copy to our clipboard. And we will paste this to the injection area of the shop page. This will make sure we're not affecting any other pages. And actually, we are just extracting the CSS rules, which contain like the deprecated selectors. So it's not as um, massive as the amount of CSS that I have inputted. So under advanced, we go to page header code injection and simply paste this code. If you have existing codes here, please make sure that you just append it to the bottom. So I'll paste it right here and then hit save. Now we'll find that this is now closer to our original design for our Palma template product page, but we'll notice that there are still things that need to be adjusted, particularly this navigation. And that's because I actually use JavaScript to place this like right above the product title. Hence, if your site is using any plugin or JavaScript code that affects the shop page, then I recommend uh, getting in touch with a plugin developer. To demonstrate this further, uh, here's another Squarespace website by Hello World Studio. The founders are students of our standout Squarespace program, and I supported them in bringing this vision to life. The shop page should look like this with even sold out buttons. But when we duplicated the site, those customizations were gone, again, because of the deprecated selectors. The product details page should look like this, but it turned out like this. So let's use our tool again. If we paste the CSS from our custom CSS panel and click Migrate CSS, if we paste the CSS to our code header injection area, then we'll notice that a lot of the customizations are now showing up, including our custom sold out button and the custom font. Then on the duplicated site, when we visit the product details page, we'll notice that the other customizations are now showing up, but it's still not exactly like our live website. In our live site, we actually have color swatches and in our duplicated site with the added code, uh, we have a drop down and that's because this color swatch is powered by another plugin by sqsb themes so we'd have to get in touch with sqsb themes and ask them if they would have um, the products v2 version of this plugin so i'd recommend working on the duplicated site and try to customize it as close as possible to the live site and documenting every part of the process. For example, what codes you pasted, what settings you changed. And once we match how our duplicated site looks to our live site, um, that's the only time I recommend migrating to the products v2 settings. Again, we have August 30th to do this. And then by August 31, the migration will be pushed across all Squarespace websites. I'd like to emphasize that when we go to sellings and begin the update process, um, automatically the DOM structure will be migrated. So to minimize the downtime, make sure you have a properly documented step-by-step -step on what codes to add to fix any broken codes. So aside from the CSS uh, fixes, make sure you also have the JavaScript fixes ready from the plugin developers and also make sure to check across devices, especially mobile and other browsers. I also would like to mention that while I highly recommend that we duplicate the current site to test the fixes before we update the live website, this duplication process has limitations. For example, if the site has unavailable fonts like 
this one and other ones that are listed in Squarespace's documentation then would have to for example, temporarily switch to a different font. Duplication is also not supported for websites that has more than 100 pages. And so if duplication is not possible, then another method I recommend is using Square Websites extension wherein we can copy the entire shop page and um, as much as possible match the settings. I hope this has been helpful in navigating the changes. If you're a business owner, I highly recommend getting in touch with a Squarespace expert whom you have worked with in building the website. We also have a directory of Squarespace experts on my website. And if you're looking for direct support from me, I offer that inside my program, Standout Squarespace.